Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm hoping to get all of the trim work done in the loft. Okay. This is my first time looking up here in a couple days. I finished up that sanding and my daughter's been priming and painting up here for the last couple days. I could see a dry spot right there. She's going to have to go over that. That's really bad. But other than that, I'm here to do the trim work today. I need to get the oh, cat. I need to get the quarter round all the way around the room and frame in the window and I really need to get that all done today. I've tried to film this several times but this cat keeps bumping the camera and jumping in the way. She's trying to get my attention so I'll pet her and if I start talking or doing anything else for a little while she goes crazy and jumps on my shoulders and stuff. Let me see if I can if I can say something without her going nuts. Okay, I can see a fair amount of stuff that my daughter missed. Like there's a big dry spot right there. That really needs to be painted over. And there's bunches of stuff where she should have spackled and didn't. I'm going to have to touch those places up. But as far as the trim goes, it's going to be three quarter inch quarter round and <laughs> I'll put a full stick on this wall with the ends cut at 90 degrees and I do the same on that wall. This cat's going to try jumping on my shoulders, but we have the heater in the way. I'm going to install the heater and then put two sticks over there. Then these ends will get the cope cuts. I'm going to have to pass this stuff through the window. This is going to be a real nightmare, but I'll get it done. And this floor is just filthy. She was supposed to sand up here, but this stuff did not drop out of the air. This was never, never vacuumed. A lot of this was never vacuumed. Ah, pain in the butt. All right, I'm going to have to move all of this stuff out of here and get a dimension for this long one first and then we'll get that one cut get it installed and go from there oh i need the dimension for that one too i'll get the dimension for this one and that one and we'll go get those cut and then we'll get this one in first and then like i said that one's gonna have to be cope cut and installed a bit later leave me kitty All right, I have a mark right there, and what I did was measured out 20 inches from this wall. It doesn't matter what the dimension is, but now I'll send the tape down to that corner over there and measure up to this line. When you're measuring wall to wall, you can't just put the tape measure and then bend it at the other end. You're not going to get an accurate dimension. This cat is just driving me nuts. She's right in the way every minute. So we have 1 16 and 5 16 plus the 20 so that's 1 36 and 5 16 so we're gonna go 1 36 and a quarter and that should fit really nice. And once I cut that, come on, I'll back bevel the corners so any junk that's in the corners is not going to make it stand away from the wall. I'll have to go around and get all this crud off of the drywall as well. So it's going to take a bit longer. All right, 136 and a quarter. All right, on this side, I went 30 inches out, and we have 79 and 7 16 on this. 
So add the 30 and we have 109 and 7 sixteenths. And I'm going to subtract a sixteenth. So that'll give us 109 and 3 eighths. All right. And then the last pieces, that's a shorter piece there, shorter piece there, shorter piece there. I'll measure all that stuff once I get these, well actually, once I get this one in, this one on this wall here, I'm going to install the heater and then get one in there. Then this one gets coped on both ends and I'll get that one in place. All right, let's go cut these. This is incredibly annoying. I've been trying to get this screen off for over an hour now and they don't have specific instructions for this screen but basically all of them you just have to pull the screen to this side it has a spring loaded thing in here but if you press that spring as tight as it goes it still won't open really pissed about that so i had to open up this plastic back here finally got tired of messing with it and I got this one in place it fits perfect now I'm gonna try this one if this one fits perfect I'm gonna bring it back with me and cut the cope cuts on both sides and but I, I'll actually do that later I'll bring it back with me and then I'll get this heater installed and cut those two pieces. Those should be real easy. I should actually, well, I gotta test fit this one first. Then I can put this one in place, nail it in place. Okay, this one fits perfect as well. It fits as perfect as you can get in and in perfect room and like i said this one is going to get coat cut on both ends and it looks like i'll have to do a little bit of relieving on the back because we have a tiny bit of malfunction towards the corner but that's no big deal okay i guess i can wait to nail this one in place Let's get that heater installed, then we'll get the dimensions of these two, then we'll bring this one over there and do the work on this and get those two cut. All right, I'm gonna quickly show you how I do a cope cut. If you don't know what a cope cut is, I'll show you at the end, but basically it's how to join two pieces of trim usually and do it without mitering. Let me find my pencil here. Okay, what we have here is just a basic 90 degree inside cut, inside corner cut, and instead of cutting both pieces like that and having an open joint, like it almost always is, you make that cut and then you run your your pencil along the very edge of it. Then you take your coping saw and do a cope cut. And what you want to do is if you are looking straight through here, you got to clear that area. And it's almost impossible to do. Oh, I have this clamped wrong. You want to have it pretty secure, so you got to be closer to the bench. There we go. Otherwise it's going to bounce up and down and you don't want that. So I'm going to want to go pretty much straight up and down along this top part. It's not the easiest cut to make. Last one I did. I've done several so far. The last one I did was much easier. It all depends on the grain of the wood. So I want to get as close to that line as possible and once I start getting right around where I'm at 
I bevel it back that way just so there's clearance. Yeah, it would be nice if this cut, cut a little smoother. It would be really nice to have a bench and a vise, but I don't have that yet. That figures the one that I would show has difficult wood that does not want to come. Alright, there we go. So, you cut the wood out of there like that. And then take a round file. And if this wasn't such a sloppy job, this would only take a couple seconds to clean this up. But I was so far from the line. that I have a fair amount to file. And this is why you want that line there. As soon as you hit the line, you stop. Just about there. And you gotta be very careful with the tip And if the tip breaks off, it's really not the end of the world. You'll probably never see it in the finished joint, but... And then your next piece of wood will... Where is The piece that this goes up against will go like that, and you'll have a perfect invisible joint if you do it correctly. This is just a piece of scrap. Kind of hard for me to see, but that's getting real close. I think that's about it. And then two of your joints are butt joints. It would go right up against the wall, and then this one would go like that. Let me see if I can turn this camera a bit. This one would go about like that, somewhere like... There we go. It would go exactly like that. And what you're seeing is the pencil line. Once I erase that, or once this is painted, it will look dead perfect. Well, it is dead perfect. That's why it looks dead perfect. This is the little piece to the right of the ladder when you first come up. This is just going to remain mitered like that because it comes up to that hole right there. This piece, or this end, has to be coped. So we'll do that real quick and then I should be able to go and install all of these and then make the window, make the window trim and get that installed.
left off yesterday, I was in the shop cutting this trim. This is how it looks installed. Unfortunately, I left the camera over there. I brought all the stuff over here and got it up here, which was kind of a nightmare. The screen wouldn't open on this window, so I had to open this up, put a ladder out here, and bring the trim in through the window. I also had problems with the window trim. Well, I figured it out ahead of time that this would not fit through this opening, even corner to corner. It was a little too big, so I had to assemble this up here. That was kind of a bitch too, but it's all done. I have a little bit of sanding left to do, and then I'll get this in place and nail it to the wall. But first, I got to get this painted. I got to flip it over and I'll get it primed. I'm not going to paint the back side of it, but I'm going to prime the back side of it. Once I start that priming, then I can go around and sand all this stuff. I have to fill. You could see all those screw holes. I have to fill those with spackle. That'll go pretty quick. Just go around and take my little hard knife and fill those in. And I got a list here. Pretty long list, but I'm going to get this finished up today. Once this window's in, if I have time, I'm going to prime the face of it and my daughter's going to paint it tonight. She's going to be painting this base trim, this quarter round, as well as the floor tonight. So I really need to get this ready. I'm also going to go around and caulk the tiny little gaps at the top. It's only in a few places, but it's places where the floor sunk or the drywall isn't 100% perfect. But you can see there's only, there's a little bit in that corner right there. There's a smidge right there that would probably cover up with just paint. But as long as I'm going around, what I'm going to do is cut the tip on this to like a 16th or even less than that. Just a tiny little bit and go along the entire top of it. But before I can do that, I have to have that spackle done. A bunch of stuff has to be done and it all has to be done in order. And actually number one on the list is getting this great stuff window and door around the window. Once that's dry, or once that's done, I can start painting this and then move on to the spackle and this, that, the other thing. It's all very complicated, but I should be able to get it all done today. I really need to get the electrical stuff done, at least on that far end, like from here around to there, which is almost all of it. But we'll see how that goes. Let me get started with the foaming and we're off to the races. Thank you. 
Okay, I have the foam around the window, the primer on, and the spackle. It's hard to see that because it's drying already. All of that stuff needs to dry a little bit, so I'm going to give it about a half hour. Then I'm going to come back and I believe, yeah, I'll try getting that window in first, get that nailed in place. Then I got to go around and sand all of the nail hole filler. Then I can caulk the top and bottom of that base molding. Yeah, lots of work. Then I got to prime the face of the window and I need to get them electrical boxes in. I don't know if I'm really going to be able to get this done today or not, but I really got to try. It's already 12.30, so I'm really racing against the clock. Okay, I'm back. Just a tiny bit of pinkness in the spackle, which means it's not 100% dry, but that's on that wall, and that's where I ended up. I can't see anything on this wall, so I believe everything is dry. Try this primer. Yep, that's dry as well. Okay, so I'm gonna trim the foam off of this window, and then I need to put the window frame in place, and then get it pretty much where it needs to go, and then measure from the bottom of it down to the floor. I'm gonna have to go make a couple dead men to hold it in place so I can get it nailed in there nice and straight. Okay, let's cut that foam and get some measurements. frame is in and all of the nail holes are puttied. That has to dry, but this putty is dry. I have to go all the way around, get that sanded, then I have to vacuum all the way around, then I can put that tiny little bead of caulk on the top and bottom of the trim and just smooch that in. Then I should be ready to sand and prime the window. We're getting down to the wire now. Got everything sanded and vacuumed up. Now, I gotta put this caulk on. This only takes 20 minutes to dry. And with the tiny little bead that I'm putting on, it'll probably only take 10 minutes. But I gotta caulk the outside edge of the window. Well, outside and inside edges of the window as well. And in some places that's a little bigger, so I'll probably have to let this dry for a bit, but what I can do is start installing some boxes here and wait for that to dry. And when it's dry, I have to sand the nail holes and get this frame painted. Then I can continue with the electrical stuff. Yeah, I'm going to be here after dark, I believe, but I don't know. We'll see. All right, let's get the caulking done. All right, 
right, all the caulking is done. I highly recommend this, this Alex Fast Dry. It is ready to paint in 20 minutes. It has a 50 year crack warranty. Not that you're ever gonna use the warranty, but generally they don't warranty something that long if it's not pretty darn good. This stuff works excellent. So I have the window caulked in and all of the molding. Now I need to wait 20 minutes for this caulk to dry. I don't want it wet when I sand this window. So I'm gonna wait the 20 minutes, then come back and sand that putty on this window. Then I have to break the edges, which is just putting a tiny little round on all of the exposed edges so you don't have sharp edges. Then I have to prime the frame. Then I can get on to the electrical. Yeah, I might be here real late tonight, but at least it'll be 100% done. Okay, I waited the 20 minutes and this stuff is perfectly dry. So I guess I didn't realize what time it was. It's already 4.40. By the time I get that window done, I have to sand it, then break the edges, and then prime it. By the time I get that done, it's going to be really late. So that's going to be all I'm going to be able to do today, which is okay because that's all of the trim work. I guess I'll do the electricals in a separate video and show you what it looks like with the toilet in place at the same time. So let's get going on that window and wrap this up. Okay, I am 100% done except for removing that heater. I'm gonna remove it so my daughter can paint into that area. Supposedly, she's gonna get this all painted tonight. The window, the floor, well, that's it. The window and the floor with the final coat of paint. And then tomorrow, I should be able to get the heater in place permanently and put it back together and then get all of the electronics in here, put the covers on. Yeah, it is going to look really nice up here. I'm going to put the toilet in place as well and mark where the holes got to be drilled, but I'm not going to be doing that for about a week. 
I'll be rebuilding the plywood toilet on my other channel, Trapdoor Woodworks. So make sure you go over there and see that. It should be pretty interesting. Once it's rebuilt, I'll be installing it. So the next video up here will be the electronics. And like I said, the toilet video will be on a different video. So if you want to see either one of them videos, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.